everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. I have another pets and more card for you. This was actually my swap card when I was in Houston for our Stampin' Up! Uh, demonstrator event called On Stage. I um, made only about 25 and I am proud to say I gave almost all of them away. I tend to hoard my swaps when I go to these places. I don't know why, but I make them to give them away. I know many of you have done that too. Um, when I make a swap card, I try to keep it simple. Now, if you if you guys have been around Pink Buckaroo a while, you know simple <laughs> is not really in my vocabulary. So when I use the word simple, it's kind of convoluted a little bit, but to me, this is a simple card. Now, Pets and More is an online exclusive stamp set. You can only find it on our website, stampinup.com. Um, the fun thing about this stamp set, and we have a couple others like these in, in our catalogs, they're called reversible. And so the idea, it's designed to stamp the detailed image, clean your stamp, then you take it and you peel it off your block and you turn it around and you ink it in a different color or the same color and stamp off and then you just stamp right down on there um, and then your image is colored. Now that is great in my, I have another video here on YouTube showing you how to do that, but you guys know me. I love my Stampin' Blends, so we're going to use Stampin' Blends to color that little cute dog. Um, you know, you, you have several ways to color images. You can color them with Stampin' Blends. You can do the reversible technique. You could stamp it on colored cardstock. You can use um, watercolor pencils, watercoloring, lots of options. So don't feel like you're ever locked into one technique. Um, the other sentiment, the other stamp, stamp set I'm using is a perennial postage, the little big hugs right there. Um, I have stamped on a heart, so we're gonna do that. Now, I have to tell you, this Gorgeous gingham paper is from our glorious gingham designer series paper pack. Um, unfortunately, because I made swaps, <laughs> I don't have any of the blueberry bushel left. So I thought, hey, let's make it in pretty peacock. I think it'll be just as pretty. Okay, let's make our little dog first. We're gonna stamp him in memento black, just on basic white, okay. And we're going to use our Stampin' Blends. I'm going to start with Light Pecan Pie. And I kind of liked keeping the middle of his face white. My dog, well, one of my dogs, her name's Pepper, and she has a half black, half white face. So I tend to color my dogs in a similar fashion. So we're going to leave that middle part white, like she has a white muzzle. All right, so I'm just going to use my blends to color, 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 color. I'm going to come down here. You know what? I think I'm going to do a little bit different than my sample. I'm going to come down here. I'm not going to color the rest of her face. Can you guys see? I kind of went under her chin there. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to leave all of that white. I probably should have done that to begin with. All right. So color, color. By the way, I am using my the, the bullet tip on my marker. Um, there is a brush tip also that you could use. I just find I have much better control when I use my the bullet tip. All right, now I'm gonna take my dark and I'm gonna add in some shadow. There would be shadow um, behind her front legs like that. There would be shadow up here, maybe around and under her little spots. I think I'm gonna color those spots in dark so that we have some contrast. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of dark and kind of go around her ears a little bit just to add again a little more contrast. Now, with those shadowing, you can take your light and just blend it out so that it's not such a hard line. All right, I think that is good. Now, the other thing, you know what, let's do, I don't know if her toenails should stay white, but I don't like them white, so we're just gonna color them the same color. Now, there's a little, there's some little accessory images in this set, one of them being the little dog bowl. So we're gonna stamp that in pumpkin pie. I didn't do a very good job. Let's try that again. There we go. Well, I don't know. It looks like my stamp needs to be cleaned. Third time's a charm. Well, I don't know, guys. We're gonna just have to go with it because I don't have my stamp cleaner here. It looks like I got a little bit of ink up in that uh, inside part of the bowl. All right, so we're gonna cut around. There's no dies for these images. So we're gonna cut around using our paper snips. And I always recommend just staying right on the outside of that 
image, leaving a little white border. Um, you also wanna do what I just did, cut away the extra cardstock because it does kind of get in your way. I'm gonna go around and around, just leaving that little bit of a white border. You wanna leave the black line that the artist has drawn completely intact. You don't wanna, you know, sometimes when you cut, you get like a little gouge out of it and you don't wanna do that. Let's see, I, you know, I think, well, I think we'll go with this one. Out of the three, none of them, I didn't stamp any of them very well. I really needed my chamois, but we'll go with the lesser of the, the messed up three. <laughs> okay, so we've got that. Now, while I have ink out, let's use pecan pie. And typically, I recommend that you stamp first, cut second, but for the sake of the video, we're gonna see if I can get the, hey, look at that. All right, I made up for my, my not so perfect stamping there by getting that right in the lines. Um, it is much easier if you stamp on your cardstock, then cut it out with the die. Okay, I have a piece of Pretty Peacock and I have the second largest stylish shape circle. We are gonna cut a circle in the top third of it, I guess, the top two thirds of it. Make sure you're even on both sides. And we're gonna run that through. And then we're gonna emboss it with one of our basics embossing folders. Um, let's see, where did I put it? Right here. This is actually a three pack of embossing folders. Um, it's a great starter pack if you haven't started embossing. Um, or if you're an old veteran like me and you just love basic patterns, it's a great um, embossing set. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put, you have to think about the, the dots. Do you want the dots popped up or popped down? Because this piece really is reversible, it doesn't matter. But if you put the Stampin' Up! logo on the top, the uh, dots will be popped up on that side. So I've got a line here that I can line up so that I am ensuring that my dots will be even. And we're gonna run that through. I've taken off plates uh, two and three, and we're just gonna do one and four. And let's see how it looks. Voila, isn't that pretty? Um, I said in a previous video that the exposed bricks embossing folder is my favorite, but I may have lied because this might be my favorite. Um, on the back of this, I wanted to kind of mute a little bit of that busy pattern in the back. So I've got a piece of vellum, which is retiring, you guys. What are we going to do without our vellum? Stock up now. I'm going to put that right there. Okay, so now it's kind of like a frosted window. I have a pretty peacock card base, and we are going to put this uh, glorious gingham designer series paper. Again, did I mention this is retiring? Get it before it's gone. Um, it retires officially um, on April 30th, but it could sell out before then. And I have cut it to completely cover my card base. Looks like maybe I'm a little bit long right here. Um, you can cut it either four by five and a fourth, and that gives you a little bit of a mat around it, or you can cut it four and a fourth by five and a half, which is what I've done. Now with dimensionals, I'm gonna get one, well, one, two, three, four, and we are going to put these on here like this and put this right in the middle. Oh yeah, that's a really good color, isn't it? All right, little pup, let's see. Let's put you on here. We'll put a dimensional down here like this. And I've got the little bowl that we're gonna put, we're gonna slide that behind her a little bit. Like that. Okay. And now our sentiment, we're gonna put up in the opposite corner, kind of balance it out. Right there. And now let's embellish. Now I saw one of um, one of the lovely stampers that I follow used uh, these metallic, hold on, let me tell you the correct answer, the neutrals adhesive back sequins to put the little 
uh, like a little tag, and I thought that's so cute. So instead of coloring it, I'm gonna put a sequin right there. And then I'm gonna take these cork rounds, which I love these, and they too are retiring at the end of April. And I'm gonna just kind of put a couple there. And then last but not least, we need our linen thread, which I left over here on the previous video's tray, but I can just grab it. And snip, snip, a little glue dot, and we are good to go. Now, think about the sentiment, big hugs. This could go for anything. You could also just change it to a hello or thinking of you. Um, it could just really be anything. Now, see how I tucked that behind the heart? That's kind of fun. And we'll cut those off. Okay, now what do you guys think? Ooh, that's a tough choice. Blueberry bushel or pretty peacock? I don't know. I like them both. All right, make sure you jump over to my blog. There's a free PDF there for you that has a supply list, the measurements, and two other Pets and More cards. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Let me know if you have questions. Bye.